Hello everyone, welcome to the Twisted DNA. So, topic for today is the gradient PCR. Let's start by talking about what gradient PCR is. Well, gradient PCR is a modification of PCR protocol in order to optimize the PCR reaction by determining the exact annealing temperature. And over here is where you see the gradient of temperature where it goes from higher temperature to the lower temperature. And before going into much detail about the gradient PCR, it's very crucial to understand the annealing stage of the standard PCR. So what happens in the standard PCR reaction is, so the primers can bind to the target DNA sequence in the annealing stage and it serves as the starting point for DNA amplification. This primer binding to the template DNA is dependent on the annealing temperature. So here we can see that both the forward and reverse primers are bound to our template DNA and it's possible because of this annealing temperature that we have at this particular stage. And this annealing temperature is the temperature that we usually use in the annealing step of a PCR reaction. And this annealing temperature is dependent on what it's called the melting temperature of the primer. And in conventional PCR, the annealing temperature is usually lower than the melting temperature in order to allow the primers to bind to the template DNA and also to avoid any non-specific binding. So if the template, um, sorry, if the annealing temperature is too high, then the primer cannot bind properly to the template DNA. However, if the annealing temperature is too low, then it allows for more non-specific amplification. So the non, any kind of non-specific binding can be a problem in our PCR reaction. So therefore, we use a gradient PCR. In order to find that optimal annealing temperature um, that is used in least number of steps, and this optimization can be done in one experiment. Now let's talk about what are the components of gradient PCR. Well, gradient PCR also utilizes template DNA, primers, DNA nucleotides, TAC polymerase, um, and PCR buffer, just like how it is utilized in a conventional PCR. So now you have prepared your sample and you load them to your thermocycler or the PCR machine. And when you program your PCR reaction, the temperature gradient needs to be set up for the annealing step. So here's an example of a gradient PCR program. Here you can see that the annealing temperature is gradient and it's set between 60 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees um, Celsius for a total of 35 cycles. So once the PCR reaction is over, then you can load your sample and run agarose gel electrophoresis and this is something that you would typically see here since we had different annealing, annealing temperature for the same sample our gel would look something like this where we can see multiple bands as a result of non-specific binding when the annealing temperature was around 60 to 62 However, if you look at 65.1 degrees Celsius condition, you see a very nice bright single band. This suggests that our ideal annealing temperature or the desired annealing temperature for this particular primer pair would be 65.1 degrees Celsius. So this is how you optimize your PCR reaction by determining the exact annealing temperature for that primer pair or for that PCR reaction. So that is all about touchdown PCR or um, the gradient PCR. I hope you like it. Um, if you do, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.